The heating doesn't work in my studio, that's why I'm wearing all this. Right, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yeah, and I hope you are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video, where I will be talking about Chelsea's rumoured transfer budget for the January transfer window if the ban is lifted, exits for both Pedro and Giroud in said January transfer window, the return of N'Golo Kante, Chelsea's only world-class player, and some lovely heartwarming comments from Kepa Aritha Balaga, Chelsea's goalkeeper about the coach Frank Lampard. Lots of interesting stuff to get into. Quick reminder to you there to subscribe to Football Therapy but more importantly make sure you hit that little bell notifications icon as apparently that's super important and if you want to help me out like the video follow me on social media Instagram and Twitter link in the frame thing and join the discord server and let's talk about football. Right then first thing first let's talk about the transfer stuff. It's been reported that Chelsea are going to have 150 50 million pounds to spend in January if the transfer ban is lifted to give Frank Lampard a real boost into achieving something much more than whatever, well, everyone expected of him essentially. Frank Lampard has pretty much admitted yes, if he can boost the squad, he will. And 150 million probably sounds right if you're taking into account the sales of both Eden Hazard and Alvaro Morata. But if he really wants to boost the squad, I think he'll be going for like two starters, maybe your Ben Chilwell and another player, maybe a striker if Giroud goes, I don't know, two players and you know they could probably spend 150 on just two players if he wants two starting level additions that in itself is pretty exciting you can imagine some elite players coming to Chelsea Football Club I've done a video on transfer targets I suggest you go and check it out uh, a couple of videos ago and if all of this comes to pass and Chelsea do have the ban lifted or you know halved into one window basically they can do business in January this could mean exits for two senior players in the Chelsea squad and both names aren't really surprising. One is Olivier Giroud. Now I've echoed this sentiment before that a striker like Giroud who's still got so much to offer in the game needs to be playing football and if he's going to be the starting striker for France for the final time in the Euros which is absolutely possible considering Didier Deschamps absolutely loves him and he offers that France team a lot he's a catalyst to the whole side so it makes sense but he absolutely needs to be playing football and at the moment he's third choice in this Chelsea team. Giroud is a bit of a cult hero at Chelsea he's won the Europa League he was excellent in the final scoring the opener getting an assist to Eden Hazard he obviously was important to the FA Cup run under Conte and you know he's been a good player for Chelsea so like I said a bit of a cult hero but let's be honest he does not fit the mold at all of Frank Lampard's football there's few times he's been on the pitch this season he's just looked completely out of place he never had any pace to lose bless him but as good as a player he is and like I said he absolutely has a lot to offer the game still it just not really in this Lampard team, it just doesn't suit at all. So you could forgive him for wanting an exit and you could forgive Frank Lampard for allowing him to go. But where would Olivier Giroud go? He has talked about the MLS, how he'd like to finish his career there, maybe a year or two out there. And he's explained he'd rather go somewhere like there than China because he can speak the language and it'll be better for his family. But I don't think he's quite ready for that. I think he'd probably like to do that at a more sort of Zlatan Ibrahimovic age, maybe like 35, 36. Because Giroud keeps an excellent shape man and he could always be able to score goals. A January exit for Giroud, where would he go? Well he's been linked recently to West Ham. Now that kind of makes sense if they just want a big man in the box to sort of bounce balls off with players like Felipe Anderson and Yarmolenko. I actually think that would work pretty well. So why not? And a really important thing to Giroud, something that he's echoed before when he moved from Arsenal to Chelsea is he really wants to stay in London. West Ham is in London. Another club he was linked with back in October was Crystal Palace. Both of these clubs look like they'll be safe this season and they're both still in London so it would suit Olivier Giroud well and also if he goes to Palace you can hang out with Gary Cahill they both can do bicep curls together and talk about good times at Chelsea right Pedro Rodriguez I actually thought Pedro was going to be an important player for Frank Lampard I thought his pacey direct uh, style of play would suit his Frank Lampard's football really really well uh, and obviously he's a goal threat but it does look like Frank Lampard is getting goals throughout the whole team which is really really great and when he's got that a player of Willian who can offer a lot of industry more creativity than Pedro Pedro is very direct he wants to get a shot off 
but Willian's a bit more creative and will lay it off to the younger kids who can shoot better and he does a lot of defensive work Willian so it doesn't really surprise me that he's preferenced Willian over Pedro now plus Willian's a year younger and he knows Willie he used to play with him at Chelsea so it kind of makes sense and Pedro I think his time is probably up at Chelsea. He's been a great, great servant. His, actually, his record at Chelsea is actually pretty good. I think he's got a goal contribution every other game or something throughout his whole Chelsea career or something. Pretty pretty consistent, considering he was never an elite marksman. Um, you know, great industry, especially in previous years, running around a lot. So he's been a great servant, and if he goes in January, it won't really be a surprise for anyone. And kind of makes sense for all parties involved, a bit like the Olivier Giroud situation. Someone like Pedro, I think Pedro would be a massive name to go to China, and I reckon he could make some serious P before he calls it in. So we'll have to see what happens with Pedro. But again, I think he's been a great servant to Chelsea. And if he does go in January, it'd make a lot of sense. Chelsea can make a bit of money out of him. And, you know, best of luck to him. This turnover of the old guard was always going to happen anyway, but especially under new management of the likes of Frank Lampard, Jody Morris, Joe Edwards, etc. So, kind of makes sense, but it will be sad to see Bo Giro and Pedro go, but like I said, you know, circle of life, right? Right, next up, let's talk about N'Golo Kante, who's returning back to fitness and was on the bench for the Ajax game, and I believe he'll start in the game against Palace. Now, if you think about the tangibles, this is an obvious assumption because A, Jorginho has got a suspension so he won't be able to play at Palace and he will absolutely be expected to start against City. And B, Mason Mount came off with a knock in the Ajax game. Now we don't know how serious his injury is. Apparently it's not that serious, but you'd be forgiven to assume that this midfield against Palace will consist of N'Golo Kante. Um, Kovacic and Pulisic coming in in the number 10 because he's played there throughout his career and he's already played in the number 10 for Chelsea. So you could have Tammy up top, uh, Willian on the left, Hudson the door on the right or vice versa. Pulisic in the 10 and both Kovacic and N'Golo Kante in the engine room. Kovacic will have to play the more Jorginho style role because you know we've seen his distributions actually been very good recently Kovacic and remember under Sari he did play the deep pivot regista role and he could do that for Frank a little bit more of the releasing the ball a bit quicker and Kante can do the Kovacic role which originally was the Kante role and we're getting pretty meta here and essentially cover ground keep possession do interceptions be a bit more of a destroyer a very very strong midfield in Indeed, and heavy rotation actually looks like a sort of very powerful midfield, so things aren't bad for Frank Lampard there with options. It will be very, very exciting to see N'Golo Kante back on the pitch and see what he offers Frank Lampard, so hopefully he can be back to his best. And you know what? Kante scores goals now, so wouldn't it be lovely to see him bang a goal against Palace? Hopefully Kayo gets a nice reception. Finally, I want to talk about the feel-good factor at Chelsea and basically cite to you some comments from Kepa Aritha Balaga about coach Frank Lampard. When asked about Frank Lampard, Kepa said, he is a coach that that was and is a legend in the club. He was a very important player during his football career. Now in his second year as a coach, he is sharing all his experience, everything he knows about football and everything he has lived, gave to Chelsea. And titles he's won, like the Champions League, the Premier League, and all the possible trophies. I'm very lucky to have him as a coach. Of course, there are a lot of things that we can improve on and we still must grow as a team. We are still at the beginning of the season, but we are enjoying and we are feeling good on the pitch and that's what's important for the team. It's really nice to hear such positive comments, but from the goalkeeper as well, man, you would kind of expected these feel good factor stuff from the goal scorers, the midfielders, all these people that would look up to Frank Lampard's game as, you know, like when he was a player, that they can reflect on themselves. But when you've got your young goalkeeper saying that and there is a good relationship there, it means a lot and it does personify the whole kind of feeling at Chelsea at the moment. When your Spanish goalkeeper is talking about the feel-good factor from your English midfielder coach, you know there's a great sort of camaraderie and unity throughout the squad. And obviously, you could see that with the never die attitude um, against Ajax this midweek. So there you have it, that's the news video for today. Of course, we'll keep you guys updated with what happens with the peel to Cass and if Chelsea do get the ban lifted, what that would mean for the club and who they could potentially buy. I may even do some more like statistic profiles of targets and you know, give you guys a little bit more nerdy stuff and numbers about players. But that's it for today. If you've enjoyed the content, remember to like the video and please do subscribe to the channel if you are new, follow me on social media, 
join the Discord server. All that lark, mate. You enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me,